Hi everybody, welcome to vodcast number 14B for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and we are going to finish up looking at the organelles that are uh, commonly found in animal cells um, with this vodcast. Okay, so picking up where we left off, uh, you had a diagram that uh, up till this point had all of these various organelles. Uh, you should be able to um, look at this diagram and you should be able to name these uh, little structures and be able to uh, begin to recognize them and recognize their functions as we go through this. Good way to test yourself uh, as we go along. Okay, the next uh, thing that we're going to learn about are these things called vacuoles. Now we've already talked about the cell itself as being uh, kind of like a soap bubble. Okay, It has this very thin uh, membrane that surrounds it uh, and it has some other little bubbles inside of it. One we've already talked about is the nucleus. Uh, and the vacuoles are basically you could just think of as being um, other little compartments within the larger compartment of the cell itself. Okay, so the vacuoles are uh, just little containers. They're made of the same phospholipid bilayer material that the cell membrane, the nuclear membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, that those things are made of. And they're just little bubbles that may contain various substances. Uh, like you, you could sort of think of them as being like uh, the pockets in your backpack or in your book bag. Um, they're little containers to keep things separate uh, from each other, okay? Uh, they act a little bit like storage tanks is the analogy that's often used. Um, they may be able to store water, nutrients, or cell products. Cell products usually being proteins, okay? Um, so now we've seen um, several different organelles that are made of this phospholipid bilayer stuff. Uh, the uh, cell membrane, the nuclear membrane, the vacuoles, uh, the Golgi, as well as the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. All right. So the next uh, thing that we're going to talk about is uh, these structures that are called lysosomes. Um, lysosomes, again, are basically just uh, another type of vacuole. Um, they are specialized vacuoles that uh, don't just contain water, but they actually contain digestive enzymes. Um, and so anything that's in them along with that digestive enzyme, if it's the substrate for that enzyme, uh, it will get broken down. Okay, so uh, for example, if the uh, cell finds that it has too many of a particular protein that it no longer needs, uh, it can form a lysosome around them, uh, and then that uh, digestive enzyme will break apart that protein um, and then return the, uh, the amino acids so it can make more proteins that it does need. Uh, you could think of lysosomes as being a little bit like uh, structures that take apart unneeded structures that are made out of Lego so that you can get your Lego pieces back to build things that you do want. Okay. Uh, so they break down food, they break down worn out cell parts, um, and again, they contain enzymes that enables them to do that. Okay, so this is our, uh, uh, again, this is another bubble. Uh, this is another structure that contains, uh, that is made out of the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, next structure we're going to talk about is a uh, thing called the centrioles. Um, centrioles are um, only found, this is the one uh, organelle that's only found in animal cells, not plant cells. Um, they're involved in cell division and they are sort of the anchor points uh, for these uh, fibers that basically pull the chromosomes apart, excuse me, when the cell divides. Now I think of them sometimes as being kind of like little miniature fishing reels uh, with fishing line uh, with a hook sort of attached to the uh, chromosomes and the centrioles kind of reel the uh, um, reel the chromosomes toward it. Now I want to be clear in telling you that this is not 
uh, actually what happens. Okay, um, this, but it, it's uh, uh, again, it's sort of a little visual uh, thing that might help you to remember what they do. If you think of them as being kind of like little fishing re reels, um, for our purposes, that's uh, probably acceptable. Now, don't be surprised if you get into uh, if you get into a, a college level course. Uh, you will find that that's not at all how they work, but uh, for our purposes, that's a that's an okay analogy that will work all right. Um, as I already said, centrioles are not found in plant cells. They're only in animal cells. Uh, everything else, all the other organelles that we've seen here uh, in this and in the previous podcast, all are found in both plant and animal cells. Okay. And then the last uh, organelle we're going to talk about are these little things called mitochondria. Uh, now you may have learned a very simplified um, uh, definition for these things or a simplified function. Um, we often talk about them as being the power plant of the cell or the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, we want to use a little more sophisticated definition or more sophisticated function. Um, what mitochondria do is they convert glucose and oxygen into an energy source that the cell can use. And the name of that energy source is something called ATP. Now you may recognize those three letters uh, and you, we've uh, mentioned it before. Um, and in the coming weeks in this semester, we'll be going into a lot more detail about ATP um, and this process that converts glucose and oxygen into ATP. Okay, uh, along with um, ATP, carbon dioxide, and water are produced as wastes in this process. Okay, so what what the mitochondria again? Just to be clear, uh, what mitochondria do um, is they essentially use oxygen along with glucose as a energy source uh, to produce this energy uh, currency that the cell uses called ATP, and uh, along the way we produce some. Uh, waste products, and that waste is carbon dioxide and water. Okay, um, and as I said earlier, often uh, we talk about them as being the power plant of the cell or the powerhouse of the cell, uh, but that definition alone will not be sufficient uh, to get you where you want to go in this class. Okay, so here we have a cell diagram, uh, which looks very much like what you should already have. Uh, and what I would like you to do um, as we identify these things, take just a minute, see you should be able to recognize these, uh, these different organelles and you should be able to name their functions as well. Okay, so we'll start off with this guy. And I hope you recognize that that is a vacuole and it functions as a storage tank. How about this one? This, of course, is a lysosome. Uh, incidentally, I won't have you distinguish between um, a vacuole and a lysosome. Often I get uh, people concerned and they ask me, well, how am I supposed to tell the difference? And the answer is, you know, you really can't. Um, either in a, in a diagram or in uh, in, a, in a photograph of a cell, um, you would have to do much more sophisticated chemical analysis. Um, but uh, anything that, um, that I would ask you about something like this on a test, uh, I would make, I would give you something clear, like I would say, well, this one contains some digestive enzyme. Uh, so what do we call the structure? Uh, and you should know that that would make it a lysosome. Okay, if you look at this section of the squiggly material that has the dots on it, okay, that of course is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And this structure, okay, this of course is our Golgi apparatus or Golgi body or Golgi complex. Uh, all three of those um, terms really have the same meaning. This, of course, is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These little dots, of course, are the ribosomes. These little structures, of course, are, are, are our centrioles. 
These, of course, are mitochondria. This one is pointing at the liquid that's inside the cell, and that, of course, is cytoplasm. Now, this is not pointing at the nucleus. This is pointing at this structure that surrounds the nucleus, and that, of course, is uh, either the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. Either of those means essentially the same thing. This one is pointing at the squiggly lines inside the nucleus, and that, of course, is our genetic material, which could be DNA or RNA. And this one is pointing at the, um, the outside of the cell, which, of course, is our um, cellular membrane or plasma membrane. Okay, so hopefully you are beginning to recognize these things and uh, you will be able to recognize them on a test or a quiz. Um, and uh, th it takes a little bit of practice, but you should be able to uh, learn to recognize these things and know their functions. Uh, before I sign off here, I want to show you um, one uh, little thing that often happens with these um, vacuoles. Um, and we've already seen this, uh, seen something very much like this on the, uh, the neurons when we looked at neurotransmitters uh, at the very first part of the year. Um, <clears throat> vacuoles, lysosomes, cell membranes, nuclear membranes, all of these uh, different things are all made of the same material, which is this phospholipid bilayer stuff that I've been talking about. And um, this allows the cell to do some things that are rather unique. Um, if we look at this particular vacuole right here, uh, and then you keep track of it, I have a kind of a little animation I'm going to uh, run through for you here. Um, what you see is this vacuole kind of moving towards the edge of the cell. Okay, um, since this uh, the vacuole is made of the same material as the uh, cell membrane that can attach there and the thing that can happen is now that can open up. So now what happens is what was the inside of the vacuole is now part of the outside of the cell. Okay, so anything that was inside of this vacuole is now going to be ejected out of the cell. Okay, this is a process called exocytosis, and we're going to be looking at this in some more detail uh, later on next week. But I wanted to show you this right now, and this is um, one of the things that cells can do to get rid of either waste or products that they make. Um, the reverse process can also happen. Uh, and when that happens, that's called endocytosis. So again, if you imagine that there is some food particle or something out here that the cell wants to uh, bring inside of the cell, um, this process basically reverses itself. And now what we do is we, we form this little pocket uh, or this little pouch, um, which can then sort of pinch off or close off. And now what do we have? Well, we have whatever was out here outside the cell. Uh, we have now brought it inside the cell in its own little container, which is pretty kind of a nifty trick. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, the reverse process called endocytosis. And as I said, uh, we will have a little bit more to say about that uh, later on next week. Okay, so that's the point where I'm going to sign off here. And this has been Vodcast 14B uh, for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. Hope you have a great day.